Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we're taking a look at another Ice Age favourite, the woolly rhino. The woolly rhino, also known as Celadonta, was common throughout Europe and Northern Asia during the Pleistocene Epoch from about 3 million years ago up until around 10,000 years ago, maybe even later. Well-preserved remains have been discovered frozen in ice and buried in oil-saturated soils. In Ukraine, a complete carcass of a female woolly rhino was discovered buried in the mud. The combination of oil and salt prevented the remains from decomposing, allowing the soft tissues to remain intact. Its range extended from South Korea to Scotland to Spain. In the later part of the Pleistocene period, the woolly rhino may have had the largest range of any known rhinoceros, living or extinct. The woolly rhinos frequently inhabited the same areas as woolly mammoths, however they apparently never managed to move across the Bering Strait and extend their range into North America. An adult woolly rhinoceros was typically around 3 to 3.8 metres, that's about 10 to 12.5 feet in length, with an estimated weight of around 3,000 kilos, that's around 7,000 pounds. It could grow to be 2 metres, that's about 6.6 .6 foot tall, and the body size was about the same as, or slightly larger, than the extant white rhinoceros. Two horns on the skull were made of keratin, and the anterior horn being 61 centimetres, that's 24 inches in length, with a smaller horn between its eyes. It had thick, long fur, small ears, short, thick legs, and a stocky body. Woolly rhinos are not depicted all that frequently in Paleolithic cave art. They're massively outnumbered by illustrations of mammoths, bison and horses. In fact, until recently, only about 20 woolly rhino images were known. However, this number has more than doubled thanks to the discovery of a remarkable cave in France, where there are about 60 rhino images. All woolly rhino images consistently show a massively deep, hugely convex shoulder hump that extends all the way forward to the back of the head. The hump is so massive that when the animal is depicted in a grazing pose, the anterior edge of the hump is sometimes shown overhanging virtually the whole of the face. Limb length and how close the body is to the ground varies quite a bit. Some illustrations show the limbs as being proportionally tiny, the belly being almost in contact with the ground, and a long, shaggy fringe of fur along the ventral surface of the belly. The majority, however, do not show this, and instead the belly is well up off the ground, and the ventral hair fringe is missing. Perhaps the coat was variable according to season. We know from cave paintings and mummified remains found in Siberia that the rhino had two horns. The horns were originally thought to be the detached claws of gigantic birds, in particular those of the Siberian mythical superbird Pine, who battled a sea monster and a giant fish. The posterior horn is often short, and the anterior horn is usually far longer, about four times longer. It is also flattened. The horn is in fact so flattened from side to side that it has sometimes been described as plank-like. During the 1760s, naturalist and explorer Peter Simon Pallas proposed that this flattened form was an artificial and caused by people cutting material away from the sides, but this is not correct. It has been suggested that the front horn was not just a display device, but an actual tool that the rhino used to scrape snow off the ground as it moved its head from side to side. This would expose buried grasses that allowed the rhino to feed further without using energy to walk to an area that was uncovered, and would have been in particular use when the Celadonta was in areas that had frequent snowfall but not a permanent covering. What do we know about the pigmentation in the woolly rhino? Thanks to cave art, we have an excellent, detailed and apparently very accurate information on the life appearance of quite a few Pleistocene animals. Sometimes this information confirms what we already suspect but on other occasions, ancient art surprises us. European cave art depicting Celadonta shows it as dark, but with massively thick, near black band completely encircling the animal's middle. The band is depicted with care. The breadth of this band is variable. In some images, it's narrow and belt-like and restricted to the middle part of the body, or to the region just anterior to the pelvis. In others, it is huge, extending all the way across the body from the hips to the shoulders. Suggested explanations for this band include that it might represent vertical folds in the skin, and a tongue-in-cheek suggestion that it might represent a saddle has also been made. While it's perhaps plausible that the band could be a symbolic feature of some sort, it seems most reasonable to conclude that it really was a genuine atonomical feature of this animal. That is, that these rhinos had a very dark, almost black band of pigmentation wrapping around their middles. 
The fact that the bands are only present in the cave art of Western Europe might show that it was unique to the population of woolly rhinos present there. It has been noted that few cave art images of rhinos show spears or arrows embedded in the body, although a handful do. This might indicate that rhinos were rarely hunted. With numerous horse, deer, bison around, we might predict that people really hunted these giant, formidable, thick-skinned animals. A rhino at one cave seems to be shown with blood gushing from its mouth and nose, while at another seems to have several arrows projecting from its belly. A few other French examples look like they have spears stuck inside the, the body. Overhunting has often been cited as a reason for the woolly rhino's extinction, much the same as most if not all of the megafauna that went extinct at the same time. Other theories for the cause of the extinctions are climate change associated with the receding ice age and hyper-disease hypothesis. One of the more widely accepted theories states that although the woolly rhinoceros was specialised for cold weather, it was capable of surviving in warmer climates. This suggests that climate change was not the only factor contributing to the rhino's extinction. Recent radiocarbon dating indicates that populations survived as recently as 8000 BC in Western Siberia. However, the accuracy of this date is uncertain, as several radiocarbon plateaus exist around this time. The extinction does not coincide with the end of the last ice age, but does coincide with a minor yet severe climactic reversal that lasted for about 1000 to 1250 years, the Younger Dryas, characterised by glacial readvances and severe cooling globally, a brief interlude in the continuing warming subsequent to the termination of the last major ice age. Well that's all I have for you this week and as always I hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned something new. If you did please leave a thumbs up and leave a comment down below, I love reading them all. And I really hope that you'll come back next week here at Shredder Zoo for some more extinct animal talks. I'll see you then. <laughs>